If you've ever found yourself questioning why you have an autoimmune condition, you're not alone. I've had thousands of these conversations and have seen people either beat themselves up over lifestyle choices they assume have led them to my office or just throw up their hands in defeat thinking they are doomed to have the same problems as their mom or dad. Of course, it's not that simple. Today I'll be discussing the role that genetics actually plays in the development of autoimmunity, how to effectively investigate your family for clues, and why we should broaden our definition of family history. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Getting into the role genetics play, I want to make sure we're all speaking the same language. DNA is a molecule found in our cells that, via a combination of nucleotides, otherwise known as genes, DNA provides instructions for making different proteins. So genes are simply segments of DNA that make specific proteins that then go on to have any number of different functions in our tissues. We first understood the concept of genes and DNA in the late 1800s, even though it wouldn't be until the 1950s when Watson and Crick famously discovered the double helix shape of DNA. The Human Genome Project, which was an international collaboration to map out and sequence the entire human genome, ran from 1989 to 2003. And the hope was that now with a full map of our genes, we could identify mutations in those genes that cause disease. Once mutations were identified, we could start evaluating ways to target that mutation and reverse or completely eradicate disease. Well, it's 2025, and I bet you can guess how that's going. It's actually going pretty well, but not for the reasons initially hoped for. Because of course, our genetic code is more complicated than that. Autoimmune diseases are linked to over a hundred different genes with no single gene responsible for any one condition. We now understand that in the long wound up ball of DNA, there's actually a lot of genetic material there that doesn't provide instructions for making proteins, but instead is meant to influence whether the protein making DNA is turned on or off. This has now become the study of epigenetics and has added a layer of complexity to our understanding of how autoimmune diseases are passed down in families. So what does all this mean for you, the person either facing an autoimmune condition or wondering how much risk you carry? It means that while genetics plays a role, it is not the sole factor and we are far from being able to, with any semblance of accuracy, predict who will develop an autoimmune condition or not. What's more, we are not able, based on genetic information alone, to predict the severity of disease, what manifestations anyone is likely to have, and how they will respond to certain treatments. I know there are many genetic tests now available claiming to provide a full picture of your health and genome and associated risks for disease, but I would advise to take all that information with a giant grain of salt. When it comes to autoimmune disease, especially the ones we see in rheumatology, there is no one gene that is known to cause disease and the development of a disease is likely due to a combination of genes and epigenetic factors that are influenced by our environment and our lifestyle. We are certainly hopeful that one day we will be able to read this information and provide a detailed assessment and plan as to what someone can do to prevent that disease from ever occurring. But as of right now, we simply can't. So then, how can we start to figure out if we are at risk? Well, we have to rely on good old school methods like looking at our family tree. The research into genetics has shown us that there are some common background genes that are shared amongst many different autoimmune conditions, suggesting that there is perhaps an autoimmune genetic profile that may increase someone's risk. In practice, I've often seen this and described it as your immune system leans towards autoimmunity. It perhaps isn't the most scientific way to explain it, but it reflects what I see in the clinic every day. 
In my newsletter, which you should totally sign up for, by the way, if you want to get insightful tips, stories, and info on rheumatology and autoimmunity. Anyways, in the newsletter, I told how a friend of mine who fits this description calls himself autoimmune. It just means that when exposed to certain triggers, namely stress, your body's response is to exhibit autoimmune symptoms like joint pain, rashes, fatigue, hair loss, etc. But it's because of this known phenomenon combined with a better understanding that there are in fact shared genes amongst different autoimmune diseases that when we look at our family tree, we want to look beyond just a specific condition, but look for any autoimmune condition. Autoimmune diseases often cluster in families, but not always in the same form. So for example, one family member might have Hashimoto's while another has rheumatoid arthritis. To uncover potential genetic risks, broaden what you look for. All our families are, well, complicated. So not everyone may be as forthcoming with their medical stories or even go to the doctor. But asking if anyone has had to see a rheumatologist, has had to be on prednisone for a long period of time, has unexplained symptoms, or has had a significant decline in their health can be clues. When we think about our family tree and genetics, I think it's important for us to also think about the behaviors, the perspectives, and the habits that we inherited. This represents the intersection of our lifestyle and genetics and can provide some clarifying insight into the diseases we see in our family. It's important we evaluate our lifestyle choices and examine how they may or may not influence our immune system's health. This is absolutely not meant to place blame or say that getting an autoimmune condition is your fault but to just acknowledge that things like diet, stress management, sleep, movement routines, and the people we surround ourselves with, it all impacts our health and are changeable. But what we frequently don't think about is how and when we develop certain habits or stories we tell ourselves about those habits. For instance, an anti-inflammatory diet can support immune health and tamper down inflammation, while sugar and other pro-inflammatory foods may exacerbate autoimmune conditions. Well, obviously many factors influence our diet choices, but how we learned to eat is often rooted in our upbringing. This may not be a gene, but our family strongly influences our behavior, which can then influence our health. When we consider inherited autoimmune conditions, it is easy to assume that if a parent has a certain condition, it must be destiny that we have it too. Now, this is simply not true. It is a combination of genetics and environment that can lead to an autoimmune condition and although not all of it is under our control, we do have some. As you reflect on your situation, I encourage you to think broadly ask questions and think not only about the potential genes you inherited, but habits you might have as well. Document this information and be prepared to discuss it with your doctor. If you need guidance or want an organized way to think through this, you can download the free Appointment Home Run Handbook, which has a whole section on thinking through your family history, and the link will be in the description box. Knowing your family tree can really help your doctor as they think about your case and how best they can help you. I hope this was helpful. It really helps if you like, subscribe, and share this with anyone you think could benefit. Just gets us in front of more eyeballs. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.